There's a little panel in the scene settings called Color Management that's been getting a lot of attention recently, thanks to Troyce Vodka's filmic configuration that he's generously made available on GitHub. If you've never heard of it, or aren't sure what the big deal about color management is, don't worry, this video is for you. When you render out an image, what you see on your screen is not actually the same as what's being generated by cycles. Here's what's going on. In real life, doubling the amount of light is going to double the brightness. Two of the same flashlights working together is twice as powerful as one flashlight by itself. The math is pretty simple no matter how much light you have. A million flashlights working together is still going to be a million times more powerful than one flashlight. Blender works the same way. We call this working linearly because everything is an even one-to-one -one ratio. According to the scene, there's no limit to how bright your lights can be. This means the amount of light can technically be anywhere from zero to infinity. The problem comes in when you try to display that on a monitor, because your screen can only get so bright. By combining red, green, and blue light, the maximum value we can get is 1. This means that all of this information we're getting from the scene, called scene referred data, has to be compressed to fit between the 0 and 1 of what we call display referred data. All rendered images go through this transform process. The way most programs do this is by essentially ignoring all of the colors above 1 and calling them pure white or only working between 0 and 1 in the first place. As you can imagine, this leads to a huge loss of potential. It forces artists to use lights that are far darker than what we would see in real life, which in turn makes our scenes less believable. This is where Filmic comes in. Instead of simply calling everything above 1 pure white, it uses the scene referred data to find the brightest point and calls that one instead, shifting everything else in proportion. This runs the risk of squishing the darker values too close together for the human eye to be able to tell the difference, so it also shifts those up to compensate. The result is a render with a significantly improved dynamic range, not unlike setting a DSLR camera to shoot RAW instead of JPEG. Since we can make lights as bright as in real life, we also get the benefit of seeing more natural behavior, like colors desaturating as they increase in value. Don't be surprised if you try this out on an old scene and don't see a huge difference right away. You need to adjust the lights to match the real world first before the magic really becomes obvious. Increasing the dynamic range like this doesn't just make the image look better. It also increases the possibilities of what you can do with it afterwards. Check out the massive difference between the two when I increase the exposure and lower the gamma in the color management settings. If this is something you'd like to try for yourself, there's a link to Troy's work with more detailed info and instructions on how to install Filmic in the description below. If you're brand new to 3D and looking for a place to start when it comes to rendering, head over to CG Cookie and check out our full intro to rendering and intro to lighting courses. Hope you found that helpful, and thanks for watching.